And welcome back here to Miami where the Dominican Republic will play their second game of this World Baseball Classic. Look at the talent on this Dominican team. Really impressive of the top 20 players according to MLB Network entering the 2023 season in all of Major League Baseball. You get five of the top 20 on this Dominican team. Machado, Soto, Alcantara, Julio Rodriguez, Rafi Devers. And we're going to see four of those five. Alcantara pitched in game one. So he won't go today, but four of the top 20 hitters, 20 players in MLB in the lineup for the Dominican Republic here this afternoon. Well, it's definitely incredible, and there, there's more on the way, I would think, <laughs> in the future. Yeah, you got that doesn't really even tell you about the full scope of the talent for the Dominican team. Here is the starting lineup, and a couple little changes. Juan Soto moves up into the leadoff spot, had some beautiful looking swings. In game one, Julio Rodriguez will hit second. Machado, Devers, Eloy Jimenez gets a chance to play for the first time. He's out in right field. Juan DeFranco, Willie Adames will start his first game of this tournament at shortstop. Candelario at first base and Mejia doing the catching. So obviously, Nicaragua has its hands full on the mound, and the guy who's going to get the nod to start the day for Nicaragua. He's got plenty of big league experience. He won't be intimidated by the names. J.C. Ramirez. Yeah, J.C. Ramirez, fastball, curveball, slider, change. He's a guy who's got a lot of kind of experience, you would say, out of the bullpen today. He will be starting. Talk to Nelson Cruz a little bit about what to expect from J.C. Ramirez. And he said a lot of curveballs early on in the at bat, and then a lot of fastballs up in the zone with that split. Let's take a look at the arsenal for J.C. Ramirez. We obviously understand the sinker, slider, four seam combo he likes to throw. We know he's got a curveball, rarely uses a changeup, but it's going to be mostly fastball and sliders to work for today. And it's all, by the way, let it all out. I mean, this is a, a, a whatever you've got left in the tank, please show it off. Yeah, kind of an all hands on deck day, you would assume, for Nicaragua. And for many teams at this point of the tournament, once it gets a, a few days in, that's kind of the way it goes defensively for Nicaragua. Valle Montes and Isaac Bernard getting the start out in right field. Alegria. Leyton, Blandino, Culbert, Novoa doing the catching, Ramirez on the mound. Defense did get a lot better for they Nicaragua did. from game one to game two. Yeah, they've turned some key double plays. They played hard. They, they made the plays when they needed to, and they certainly will need that against this powerhouse in the Dominican Republic. Chris Graham, our home plate umpire, Canadian native. Angel Hernandez is the crew chief. Mike Estabrook also a part of the crew. Oh, I love me some Angel Hernandez. There he is. Never boring. Never boring. He's a movie. So we start the day in Miami, and it's a very important game. As you figure, the Dominican Republic has a huge edge in this matchup, but an important day for them to play well. Juan Soto goes after the very first pitch and skies a pop up on the first base side, way up there, and it's going to fall in the dugout. Chesler Colbert couldn't quite get there to make the catch, so Soto lives to see another pitch. That's the beauty of kind of you know teeing off on the on the first at bat. You think about it the night before, you think about it obviously for the Dominican with two days with a day off. Had 48 hours to think about am I swinging at the first pitch? Sure enough, he was ready for that first pitch. You read anything into the flip flop of Rodriguez and Soto at the top of the order? Just trying a different look? Just trying a different look. I, I think for Nicaragua it's gonna be, you know, all hands on deck. It's gonna be mostly a bullpen game and I think any time you can kind of flip flop lefty righty righty lefty these are hitters that doesn't matter who's pitching right they're elite one and one to Soto and he lights that one out to left center field that'll be another hit for Juan Soto his third already in this World Baseball Classic so he starts the game with the first hit for the Dominican the manager for the Dominican team Rodney Linares very calm after the game the other night where things really did not go well for his team. I think a good steady response from a manager who's facing some pressure with this group. When you have a roster like this how, how can you you panic right there's no need to panic he knows what's inside that clubhouse and I think in general all the players are, are, are very calm they know, they know who they are. So now Rodriguez stands in and takes a strike. Well, from J.C. Ramirez. You wonder why Soto hits for a high average every year. It's you know being able to stay through the zone, how flat he is with that swing, how connected he is, just gorgeous. Takes his lead over at first base. Rodriguez.
Rodriguez kind of muscles one behind first. Colbert makes a nice catch in foul territory. It's a lot tougher than it looks right there. That ball, that ball is spinning on the foul line territory. A guy who's known to play third base. You know, one of the things I like with, with guys, look at his mouth. It's open the whole time. Every time your mouth is open, your eyes do not move. Anytime your mouth is closed, your eyes tend to kind of jitter up and down a little bit. Learned that from a, one of the greats, Drew Stubbs and Jay Bruce. Learned that from uh, Mike Edmonds, Jim Edmonds, the center fielder for the Cardinals, told him, hey, when you're running and you're trying to catch a fly ball, open your mouth, never close it. Your eyes start to just jitter a little bit. I don't know that I've ever heard that before. Well, there it is. Manny Machado takes ball one. So look, we're five minutes into the game. I've already learned something today. It's baseball. You'll Keep learn it up. something every single day. Keep it up. <laughs> we got this game and another one later tonight here in Miami. I'm talking to Manny. So what's going on, man? He says, you know, I just got to swing at the right pitches. If I'm, if I'm in control of the strike zone, good things are going to happen. When I am connected, good things are going to happen. I'm going to get into better counts, kind of like the one we're seeing right here to 2-0. I would like to see him, though, get this pitch right now and drive it to right center. Or if he does hit a foul ball, hit a foul ball to the right side of the field, not the left side of the field. That means he's too quick if he's spinning off to left field. Uh -oh. Drives that one deep, but foul. As we talked right there, a little, a little too quick. Obviously, we know that wasn't a fastball right there. It was a little bit of a cutter slider, but you know, anytime the ball tells you a lot. You know, when you hit a foul ball, it'll, it'll, it'll give you the answer you need on how to approach it and how to adjust. Let's see if Man Manny makes an adjustment here, 2 1. Machado playing for the Dominican Republic, of course, went to school, went to high school here in Miami, still lives in Miami, so very comfortable in this venue for every round of the World Baseball Classic. Spring training for Machado now that he's a, a Padre for now and for many more years yeah. is out in the Cactus League. Went and picked up my kids on Friday at school. Why not? Said, hey, I'm gonna go pick up your kids. I said, all right, man, go pick them up. And my sister, it was great. Man, my, my kids loved it. It's a chance for him to spend a couple weeks here at home yep. and also get ready for the season. So I would I would imagine for Manny it's a little bit of a treat to I mean, not that he doesn't want to be with his Padres teammates, but buy an extra 10 days at home. Anytime you can come to Miami, obviously, or anytime you can go home and Sleep on your own bed. It, it, it's always, uh, it's always good. Soto at first, one out, just getting started here. The third day of pool D play. Everybody gets one off day among the five days. You got five teams, four play each day. Today, yep. it's Venezuela, the team that has the day off after their great start to this tournament. And a much needed day off for Venezuela. They, they use a ton of pitchers, so everybody can reset now. Kind of the perfect timing for them. In the dirt, and it skips by the catcher, but Soto no. didn't get a good enough read and then didn't want to risk it. You got to be 100% sure, right? Especially right now with this 3 2 count. Much harder to read those picks right there off the dirt than you would think. I would like to send him right here if I'm Soto. Manny's shown the ability to go deep into this count. There goes Soto. And Machado drives another one way foul into the upper deck. And it'll ricochet all the way down below. When I was a kid and I came to big league games, I loved the foul balls. Bring your glove. You never know. It, it, they just they can look so impressive like that one did. It's 12 o'clock. This this stadium is rocking right now. Yes. Just been the story of these first three days. Incredible fan support. Another 3 2. Machado pulls another ball foul. He's given Juan Soto his workout over there. Doesn't have to do his conditioning after the game. He's good. <laughs> he's, he's a baby. Be all right. He has had the calf issue. I mean, he seems to be fine. The Padres are letting him play. At least for now in this tournament, they have put a restriction on Soto. He's not going to play back to back days. And we'll see if that changes if the Dominicans can advance all the way to the semis and the championship game. We'll see. And he's got to let this ball travel a little bit more. Fouled it back. That's better right there. That's a good swing. That's 
That's the Manny swing right there. More than not, when he's going wrong, he's rolling over. But that ball right there, that swing, very connected, very tight, using his lower half. That's where Manny, you can tell, the longer this at bat goes, advantage goes to Manny. It doesn't go as much to JC. This will be the tenth pitch of the at bat coming up. Got to be a hitter, not a slugger at this point. See if Soto keeps going from first base. There he goes. And another foul ball. Everything to that pull side for Machado. So now 10 pitches, seven of them have ended in foul balls. And seven sprints for Soto. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, it goes from being funny to maybe not quite so funny. Right. JC Ramirez trying to get through Machado. Soto runs again. Machado high drive center field. Montez back. At the wall, and he will make the catch right up against the fence. And now Soto's really got a sprint to get back. He does two down. That was a very productive out. Made JC work a lot. Just missed this ball. Talk about this big ballpark. Was hit so high and so hard, 404 feet, even though it stayed in the ballpark. Montez, for a moment, had a hard time finding the ball, but he did locate it. So now Devers, after the long, grueling at bat from Machado, ends in and out. Devers takes a strike. Well, there's really no break in this lineup. When you talk about a, an at bat from Manny over 10 pitches, and now you got to face La Carita. Babyface. We showed you the graphic of MLB Network's top players in MLB. Five of the top 20 on this Dominican team, and four of the five, the top four hitters in the lineup today. I'm just looking at these three days now, this tournament. We look at these hitters, obviously early on and into their their mojo, trying to get ready for the season and all that, but. You can really tell who's locked in and who's not by the, by the way they take pitches, the way they can control the at bat. Two and one. Never to the big news of the offseason for the Red Sox. Red Sox were under some real heat locally, nationally, about the way they were letting some of their great players go. Xander Bogart signs with the Padres. A couple years after they traded away Mookie Betts, but they got the deal done with Devers, so he's going to be in Boston for a long time to come. It's got to feel nice. It's been a great place for him. 2 1. Fouled. Well, we said Fenway Park is made for a hitter that can go and use the whole field, right? When you're in trouble, you can. You can let that ball travel as much as possible and collect your hits. When you're going good, you can spray it everywhere else. And I remember Adrian Gonzalez when he went to Boston, how him and David Ortiz was just peppering those balls to left field, kind of what you know Devers does on a daily basis. But what a place to hit if you're a left-handed hitter. 2-2. Two -two. He drives that one the opposite way. That's a base hit for Devers. Oh. Valle lets it go by to the wall. Soto around third. And he's going to come in to score the first run of the game. <laughs> Nelson Cruz <laughs> appreciates the effort on the bases from Juan Soto. Uh, he was busting it from first base. Great secondary. Mr. Devers, though. What a pro. What an at bat. So you take a look at that swing. Look how he lets his ball travel. Look how connected he is with his backside, his back elbow. Just playing pepper the other way. That big miscue by Baez. And then we can just see Soto run and run for days. 
Yeah, Ramirez unhappy that the ball got by that allowed Soto to come in to score. That was a story the first day for Nicaragua. They did a lot of things well, but the defense really cost him. Eloy Jimenez first pitch swing, a pop up, and it falls. Well, it's just happening too often to this team. They're not talented enough overall to make up for some of the defensive mistakes. Now you give Jimenez a, a second life. We talked about it in this tournament going into game one with Nicaragua and Puerto Rico. We said, hey, they need to play good defense. They can't give up outs. If they're giving outs to these teams, these powerhouses, they're going to make you work for everything after that. And sure enough, right now, JC at 22 pitches and, and counting. Well, that's got to be an out. Alegria has to be able to come in from third and make that catch. Yeah, right there. That's that's third baseman's ball all the way. You got to get let the catcher get out of the way, and that's all his ball. JC Ramirez, who appeared in game one and threw 24 pitches in that game. Now this one is muscled out to left center, kind of hanging up there. Who's going to get it? The answer is what a play. wow, what a catch. The shortstop laid tone. Wow. All right, that makes up for some of the other defense because that was spectacular. What a play for Nicaragua to limit the damage. Just one for the Dominican Republic. We go to the bottom of the first in Miami. All right, the Dominican Republic jumps out to a 1 0 lead. So now Nicaragua will come up for the first time. Brandon Leton, he's got to be feeling pretty good after the catch he made to end the top of the first. He is the leadoff hitter today and the shortstop. Alegria at third. Perez, the DH, Colbert, Blandino, Bernard, Novoa, Valle, and then Montez hitting in the number nine spot in the order. Nicaragua has really not gotten the offense going yet in this World Baseball Classic. Although they have done some things well, man, what a, a tall task today against a guy who's got some of the best pure stuff in baseball, Christian Javier. Oh, man, he is absolutely dominant. ERA under 254, 148 innings pitched, will not walk anybody in. We're going to see a lot of high fastballs off Christian Javier, just like that one. Yeah, you, you sort of. Can, I'm not saying you know exactly what's coming with Javier, but there isn't always a whole lot of nuance with him. It's just awesome stuff. He's got that invisible. Hey. Movement. The easiest way to put it to the viewers is you see it and now you don't. I mean, you think you're on it, you, you think you can get on top of it, and, and more than not, you're always trying to hit three quarters of the ball or at the top of the ball, and you always tend to either get too steep on it and you fall it off, or you just absolutely whiff it. First time he's ever appeared in a World Baseball Classic game. The hardest pitcher to hit of pitchers who threw 100 innings or more in baseball last year. You know what he did in the World Series Game Four versus the Phillies: six innings pitch, zero hits, and two walks only. Obviously, that was a, a no hitter that the Houston Astros threw. Yeah, a historic game in the World Series. Even as a combined no hitter, there hadn't been one in the World Series since Don Larson's perfect game. And it came after the Phillies had hit. What five home runs in game three oh just put on a, was a batting practice a home run derby and Javier showed up the next day <laughs> and the whole thing changed. It's amazing. Earlier that year of course he had, he had been a part of the starter for another combined no hitter. That's never happened before. This is with his breaking ball high so. Count runs full to the leadoff hitter Leighton. Well, he's found himself in a hitter's count right here. I think he's going to go back to that that slider. Right? He's going to go with his bread and butter and Javier using that four seam up in the zone. I walked him. That wasn't close. Well, let's take a look at the arsenal for Christian Javier. What he brings. Well, obviously, we've talked about that four seam up in the zone, which he throws 60 percent of the time. Occasionally the slider to the right handed hitters that knuckle curve and that change up doesn't necessarily use the change up a whole lot as you can see the average on that is 286 a lot of four seamers a lot of sliders and that steel strike knuckle curve that he likes to throw especially with runners on base.
Very important for Christian Javier right now to you know win those those oh counts win the one one counts if he can do that he can kind of get into a rhythm and feel himself throughout this game right there. That's a good slider right there. Slowed himself down. That's a good call by Mejia. He's been a little bit quick with those fastballs up in the zone and more than not as a pitcher just like a hitter when you're rolling over balls you want to kind of slow yourself down the same thing goes for a pitcher. I mean, you're a little too quick with that fastball. Well slow him down throw him a change up throw him your secondary stuff. Slow him down now he can get back up on that fastball again. Oh a two. Efficiency is such a big part of success in this tournament format where you have pitch limits where it's still March where pitchers even without those rules would be limited. That one's hit well to right center field but hanging up plenty of time for Rodriguez to make the catch. Defense for the Dominican Republic. Rodriguez out in center field. I think overall they feel like they've got a solid defensive team. Well, they sure do. They got Juan Soto on left, Hilo Jimenez in right field, who's getting that start. Manny, Adames, Franco, Candelarios, Francisco Mejia behind the dish, and obviously Christian Javier on the mound. But when you talk about these these outfielders, my goodness, Hilo Jimenez, probably your, your biggest you know, non fault threat. But Julio Rodriguez will cover his back and he'll be just fine. You got the great Machado at third. Willie Adamas, very solid defensive shortstop. Now a little bloop behind Machado. It's going to fall. Let me cover third. And they will. So the runner, Leyton, has to stop at second. Lucar Perez didn't exactly hit that hard, but with Machado playing in, he hit it right over his head. We've seen this Nicaraguan team bite off a lot of good pitches, especially in this tournament, like we see right there. Not trying to do too much, just trying to just fight them. Good hitters, they find a way, find a knock, somehow, some way. You know, both games, Nicaragua has been competitive. They, they, they've lost both games, but this has been a team that has not gone quietly. We'll see, maybe today this is going to be a little bit more of a fight than we expected. Chesler Colbert takes the breaking ball high, two on, one out here in the bottom of the first. Colbert hasn't had a hit yet in this World Baseball Classic. He's 0 for 7. But it'll be a good one right now if he can get on the board with this hit. Possible RBI situation right here. One, one, of the, one. one of the things about Javier, too, is that you don't necessarily get a lot of ground balls with Javier. It's a lot of pop ups, obviously, because of the fastballs up in the zone that he likes to use. Anytime he wants a ground ball, he usually goes to that slider. Foul ball, and the count is now one and two. You can tell he's got good life today on that fastball. It's been a lot of jam jobs and a lot of late swings so far earlier on in, in this inning. And it's interesting in this tournament, it, you try not to read too much into strategy because sometimes big league clubs are dictating part of when pitchers are used, what day, for how long. So it's not always all up to. A World Baseball Classic manager. One, two, up and away. That missed badly, but there was some talk about maybe trying to manipulate the pitching a little bit for this Dominican team, figuring that this matchup here is fairly lopsided on paper. And I don't know, maybe when you lose that first game, you just have to throw all that out the window and say, we got we got Yeah, you also got to know your roster, right? Who do you have in your roster? I, I, I kind of learned a little bit from the Puerto Rican experience against Nicaragua, whether you threw Marcus Stroman, if not one of your best pitchers. Yeah, that might have cost him. That might. We don't know, but later on, we'll see. Right field, Jimenez makes a catch and, and, and out number two. The reason I say that too is, you know, Marcus Roman goes against Nicaragua, Puerto Rico wins nine to one. All of a sudden now you're facing a tough Venezuelan team, and you're kind of gearing up for a team like the Dominican eventually in, on Wednesday. But you got a tough task tonight against Israel that they'll be ready to go, really ready to fire, and kind of running out of pitch, pitchers at this point. 
now Alex Blandino against Javier Blandino's had a nice tournament so far only the one hit he's made some really nice plays defensively. You look at his uniform and just see baseball player all over him huh. He, he does and he's a guy who can move around he's versatile defensively. To do some of those little things that Nicaragua has talked about that this is not a team that's going to out slug the Dominican Republic they're just not. And that's where these kind of at bats are so crucial. You get a chance for a run, build a little rally against a guy as tough as Javier. You may not get many more of these opportunities. You talk about Blandino, first rounder in 2014 draft, 29th overall by the Reds. The guy who can handle the bat. No. Oh. Took the breaking ball. Right. Did good, not swing. Good take right there. Rango trying to tie this game here in the bottom of the first. Both pitchers pushed a little bit in the first inning. Landino to left center field. Hit it pretty well. It's big out there though, Rodriguez. Plenty of room. For round number three. A walk, a hit for Nicaragua, but no runs. We go to the second. It's one nothing. Kind of ran the gambit in the top of the first with the defense for Nicaragua, didn't we? We sure did. I mean, we talked about the question marks all over the field, but you know, more than not, baseball gods will reward you and give you more opportunities, as we see here with Elon Jimenez's he blue. Watch his mouth. See how his mouth is open? <laughs> That's why he caught it. <laughs> the only reason why. And Sandor Guido. He needs more of that last play, less of the first two. A ball that got by, error charged against Valle. No error on the pop up that fell, but a play that really needs to be made. I wish we can go back to that and you can watch him. He was full open, like he was ready to eat a nice <laughs> rib. Here's one to Franco, switch hitter, young second baseman for the Rays. He's had good at bats already in this World Baseball Classic. Chased one there, it's one and one. What a stud. I'm looking forward to watching Franco this year and hoping that he stays healthy because I do believe I mean he's already showed all the skills that make him such a special young player but last year he had the hand problem and he had two different injuries cost him some time and even when he was back he just didn't quite look like himself. Yeah it's funny we uh, talking to Manny early on during the practice days with the Dominican Republic and I asked him about the shortstops and Pena and Franco Segura and you know got a lot of really good shortstops and I said all right who stood out I said you know Pena he just does everything right but when I saw Franco and the way he was able to just move his feet throw from any angle it was explosive and it was impressive. This guy can do it all if he can just stay healthy oh it'll be a thrill. He had a minor league career almost unlike anybody else over the last say 10 years just at a such a young age to put up the kind of numbers and production that he did. Three two. He marks a walk. He's done a lot of that already in this World Baseball Classic. That's a leadoff base runner for the Dominican. Now I want to see him run. I want to see him run early. Continue to put pressure on Nicaragua and their defense. Now Willie Adamas comes up. We didn't get a chance to see him in game one. 31 home run season as the Brewers shortstop last year. With the lean back. There we go. The lean back. I asked him a little bit about that. He said, you know, when did you start getting that lean? He says, you know, one day in the cage, 
started leaning and, and my eyes would just get squared up to the pitchers. I felt like I can see him better. So after that, hit a few off the machine and continued with the lean. And then he said, all right, this is it. This is what's going to work. He just leans back and gets set, gets ready to roll. There goes Franco from first. The pitch high and tight. The throw not nearly in time. That's a steal for Juan de Franco. That's an automatic steal right there. There was a slow pitcher going to home plate. I mean, that took forever to deliver in J.C. Ramirez's pitch. Uh, that stolen base was stolen off the pitcher, not not necessarily as a catcher. We see that good lead, and look how long he takes in J.C. Ramirez to deliver that ball. Easy stolen base. The Dominican Republic should take more advantage on J.C. Ramirez and his delivery process. So still nobody out. Runner at second. Adamas pulls the ball foul. The Dominican team is so talented. You get the World Series MVP on the bench today, Jeremy Pena. Adamas starts. <laughs> In his place, and it's good problems to have, but there is a little bit of a log jam at that spot for this team. Rodney Linares, Rodney Linares talking before the game about how they had a little, some advanced numbers, some metrics that said maybe today would be a good day to play Adamas. I think uh, this team is, you can't go wrong, right? Kind correct. Like a team like USA with that stacked lineup of hitters. You know, this is the dazzling fact right here with most home runs by a shortstop. Leah Adams is up there. Since 2020, nobody's had more at shortstop. He's big personality, beloved oh. teammate, the high energy player. I mean, you kind of figure for an event like this where the fan energy is so high, the emotion runs high, he's kind of the perfect personality. No, he's that. What I like to call in this stack lineup, the stack roster, a really good glue guy. Another long at bat here. Machado had the marathon at bat in the first inning. Now, Willie Adamas is making J.C. Ramirez work. Already up to 36 pitches thrown, with no outs in the second inning. Now that bullpen at some point, they're going to start getting getting loose. And these are the at bats where. The Dominican team just has to be better. They were 0 for 12 yeah. with runners in scoring position against Venezuela. 0 for 12 with this lineup, that seems sort of impossible. It happens. The good pitching for the most part is going to be good hitting, especially early on in this tournament. They're 0 for 1 so far today, so they're still looking for their first hit with a runner in scoring position here in Miami. The good thing about this is. Even if there's a runner on first base, they're just going position. Like we saw earlier with Devers. That is a fact. On this team, scoring position is kind of a loose term with all the power that they have. But still, against the very best teams, if you want to win a championship in this event, you're going to have to execute in some of these situational at bats. Nelson Cruz, at times, I would be on first base and he would tell me, I'm hitting. You're already in scoring position because I'm in scoring position. That one is pulled sharply foul. One swing can change everything. Nelson Cruz, who is not only a member of this roster, but also is the team's general manager. So he's, he's, he's worked extensively getting this roster ready. There he is. GM in uniform. 2 2. Adamas, high fly ball, left center field. Montez. He can tag. The warning track. He'll catch it. Franco will tag. And he'll go to third. That's 10, 11 pitches in the at bat and hit it deep enough to tag Franco from second base. That's a quality at bat. Just like we saw with Manny in the first inning. We're seeing it right now again with Adamas. So you're making J.C. Ramirez work like that. More than not, you're going to break. Problem is now, if you're Nicaragua, you got to play in. You know you haven't been scoring a lot of runs, so this is a crucial factor, a crucial at bat right here for Candelario. For J.C. Ramirez, he needs a ground ball or a strikeout, one or the other. Jamer Candelario had two hits against Venezuela. Runner at third, one out. 
Mm. Infield in. Hey. Good breaking ball for a strike. Uh, we talked about that earlier in the show how he likes to steal strikes with that curveball, especially early on and with runners in scoring position. Situation right here, right? When curveballs first pitch and when change up second pitch, you don't necessarily want to throw that fastball. Fastball is a contact pitch. You want to stay away from that a little bit. You can use his aggressiveness 1 1 here on that breaking ball down because you want to strike out. You want a ground ball or a strikeout in this at bat. I would think the curveball and the change up is a pitch right here. Let's see if Candelario's can stay soft here. Switch hitter batting left handed. And he pulls that one on the first base side. Foul. It's one and two. A lot of times the scoreboard, Dave, will dictate what pitch is coming. All right, understanding the infield, understanding what's happening in front of you. You look at the scoreboard. With all these analytics right now, you get lost in the scoreboard. Look at the, the inning we're on, the pitches he's thrown. He's going to give you your best stuff. That one wasn't close. It's two and two. Those for J.C. Ramirez right now. The window's closing for him. Yeah. Bullpen is going now for Nicaragua. Time to let it all hang out here. Two two. Full count three and two. He's got nothing right now for J.C. for Candelarios. I mean, it's it's at this point it's just hoping that Candelarios swings over a pitch or maybe swings out of the zone, but. Candelario seems pretty comfortable right now in that box. Tanner Dilmer Mejia is the guy warming up in the pen. Full count three and two. And he got it with the breaking ball. Strike three. That uses aggressiveness right there. We talked about it earlier in the at bat, the start of it. He's a ground ball or a strikeout. Very quality pitches he threw right there in that at bat as we see that slider. The first, the pitch he started him off is what led to the finishing pitch. Against Candelarios. Great execution right there by Jason Ramirez. So, the veteran who's been around for so long, trying to dig deep and figure out a way to get through this second inning, keep it a one run game. Ball. Down and in, ball one to the ninth place hitter, another switch hitter, the catcher for the Dominican today, Francisco Mejia. On the ground to first. Colbert's got it. And he feeds to Ramirez, who just gets there ahead of Mejia for out number three. More frustration for the Dominican Republic in those situational at bats. Still one nothing. Well, kind of a cool bit of trivia. The final home run hit at Candlestick Park. Marvin Bedard, who's one of the great players ever to come out of Nicaragua. And of Really nice Giants career. That was the last long ball before Candlestick was no more. Giants since then have moved into their beautiful waterfront ballpark. And Marvin's son, Isaac Bernard, is a part of this team in Nicaragua. He's going to lead off here in the second inning with a score one nothing, the Dominican Republic. Well, he's coming off a strong 2022 Frontier League, who batted 316, 23 homers, 66 RBIs. We know he can definitely handle the stick. He can slug a little bit as well. He's off on a tough task right here against uh, one of the best in our game right now. Grew up around the game. Isaac did. Hey. Strike one from Christian Javier. Ball from Bernard. It's 0 and 2. Marvin was going to be the manager of Team Nicaragua, and then yep. a, a family issue popped up. Sandor Guido stepped in. But I'm sure Marvin had been looking forward to managing his son. What a great crowd, huh? You know, it's an early game. It's a Monday in Miami, and yet this ballpark is 
and it's not every seat taken, but it's packed. Great breaking ball there for strike three, swinging. First strikeout for Christian Javier. He went soft right there with that slider, started him off with that changeup. Just very well executed right there. Bernard, a guy who hits the fastball very well, kind of stayed away from the, fa the fastball. Tough at bat right there by Bernard. So now the catcher, Melvin Navoa. Navoa's taking a leadership role on this team. I think Nicaragua played a couple exhibitions in the Grapefruit League. I think against the Mets and the Cardinals were the two games that they got, and they were competitive in both games. Said he learned a lot. They learned a lot. The whole team learned a lot. They felt like they can compete in this stage with these players. And Navo was very vocal about the fact that it gave this team a little boost of confidence. Fly ball, Jimenez, two down. They got a run against Max Scherzer, who took the loss in in one of those exhibition games. It's got to feel good. I mean, you beat Max Scherzer, whether the game counts or doesn't count. You beat him. You they can talk count. yourself into, hey, we got a chance to hang here. Valle, his at bats have been good so far. Two for four. Left handed hitter doesn't have a lot of power, but he can get the bat on the ball. Yeah, he can do it all. We saw some tough, tough sack, sack bunt yesterday. Tough two strike hits yesterday as well. He's a pro. Love guys that choke up. Always felt like that's you know well that's missing in today's day and age. Well, Jeff McNeil, and the only guy that kind of comes to mind that, that chokes up. This is a guy that chokes up, knows his play, knows his, his swing. I watched Jeff McNeil the other night. He choked up so far it looked like he was choking up to the sweet spot. <laughs> I mean, it was I, I couldn't believe how much he was choking up. It's early. It's early for everybody. <laughs> Nowadays, you got the, the axe handle, got the big barrel, the big knobs. And then you got guys like this guy. There you go. Just chokes up. No swing. I, I saw Team USA had a couple of hitters last night using a big, big knob. Ooh, I don't think he won. It's the intent, right? Oh, no. No, no, no. Orlando didn't need the umpire's help. One two. Little fly ball, shallow left. Here comes Soto, and he'll make the catch. He can run right into the dugout and get ready to hit because as we go to inning number three, it'll be Juan Soto, Julio Rodriguez, and then Manny Machado coming up next. Two innings for each of the two starters so far. Big difference in terms of the pitches thrown. J.C. Ramirez has already thrown 48 pitches one time through the order. The Dominican Republic hitters hit 18 foul balls against him first time through the order. Running up that pitch count, but he's still in the game against the top of the lineup. Soto, Rodriguez, Machado. Only the one run, though. One nothing. As we go to the third. Ball one to Soto. I think for what he brings to the table, it, it's been a win for J.C. Ramirez. Uh, although he's thrown a lot of pitches, but he's kind of maneuvered his way through that lineup. And he's asked to go out there for the third on a tough task with three tough hitters. The 1 0 -oh pitch. That one wasn't close. You, you saw those numbers from Juan Soto. And watching him hit in the first two games of this tournament. I don't believe a 240 batting average is coming again in 2023 I don't for think this so guy. Either. You know, talking to him, he's talked about how he wants to, you know, get back to hitting the ball to left center. I know batting average isn't always the best way to measure an offensive player's impact, and his on-base average was still high. Still hit power last year. He's one of those guys you watch him take batting practice. 
and it bores you with how many line drives to left field he hits. Oh, huh. Here and comes I think another one. That's the reason why, you know, he, he can hit for he can walk so much. He doesn't strike out. He's so consistent. He can ride the big wave because he's so direct to the baseball. Everything he does is with a with a purpose, whether it's in the batting cage or in batting practice on the field or in the game. Every swing is an A swing. Got himself into a good count here against Ramirez, three and one. Ball That's ball four. Thing. So Soto draws a leadoff walk. He's on base for the second straight time. Understand the manager for Nicaragua, Sandor Guido, just trying to figure out how long can I stick with JC Ramirez. Maybe he's decided I'm going to stick with him as 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 far as the pitch limit will allow. Yeah, I would think so too. I think that's the right move. You look at Soto though too. How about the fact that he's leading off? He he hasn't really let off that much in his career, but right now he looks like the total package on leadoff. It's a pretty good fit, I think, for his skill set. He's running. Rodriguez drives one down the left field line toward the corner. Valle will go into a slide and he caught it. He disappeared from our view into that corner, slammed into the wall, and he caught the ball. What a catch. Wow, what a play. And hopefully he's okay. Well, I've always said this left field should be played by a left fielder, by a lefty. And boy, he made an absolute gem right there. Let him go. Feet first to protect yourself. That's a catch. The best left fielders in our game, I would say, are all lefties. Got that advantage for balls like that. What a catch. What a play. A ball like that on your glove side as opposed to your opposite side. And Rodriguez can't believe it. Wow. Well, we've seen a couple of real misplays from Nicaragua in the field. We've also seen two spectacular catches, allowing them to hang around in this game. Here's Machado, and he drives that one to center field. Montez back at the wall. He will leap, and he makes a catch. Two times already in this game, Machado has driven one to the deepest parts of this ballpark. And both times he's come up just a little bit short. That's a game of inches right there. Got a pretty good crack at it. I think he got a little bit underneath it, a little bit out in front, but sure enough, quality at bat so far as we take a look at that swing. Look how connected he is. Look how flat he is. Yeah, he got it a little bit off the end of the bat. That one carried 390 feet. He needed a few more. Pitching change coming here. One nothing, Dominican. Well, you got to give J.C. Ramirez credit. It wasn't perfect. Gave up some loud contact. 55 pitches, but two and two thirds innings for Nicaragua, and only the one run allowed. He is. Responsible for Soto at first base. Nicaragua goes to the bullpen and the left hander, kind of a late addition to this roster for the World Baseball Classic, Dilmer Mejia. From El Sauce, Nicaragua. Last pitch in the minors for the White Sox organization in 2021. Made it, made it as high as high. Eh? They're going to need a lot out of him, but talking about JC Ramirez and the job he did, I mean, he maneuvered his way through a tough lineup, just one run. I, I, I would think he would be very happy with his outing. He didn't go as deep as he wanted to, but he has given Nicaragua a chance. A chance to hang around. That's I, when you're facing a talent deficiency like Nicaragua. That's no knock on the Nicaraguan players, but no. the Dominican Republic is just so loaded. Hang around, see what happens. Devers against the lefty Mejia. That's ball one. We notice with these lefties that Nicaragua. Ha Halves, a lot of soft throwing, a lot of change up on change up, a lot of sliders, not that many fastball. We'll try to just mess with your rhythm and timing a little bit. I would say so far in this tournament, it's been an effective Absolutely. style of pitching against some of the best hitters in the world. You don't necessarily need to throw 100, where in today's day and age, everybody's throwing 95, 100. I remember, you know, being on the opposite side of that, and I would 
just see all these lefties throwing 95 96 that were specialists. These guys are doing it throwing 88 90 miles an hour and working off timing at the end of the day this is about how can I get the timing off a hitter. Three and oh. Devers did not get credit for the run batted into the first inning. He hit the line drive to left and got by Valle. They they did give him a double, but no run batted in. They charged Valle with an error. Valle has made up for it with his catch along the sidewall. Leighton with a spectacular catch. The defense for Nicaragua has helped. 3-0. Side, good pitch. And again, the Dominican has already lost a game. They lost their opener to Venezuela. Tight game late, but Venezuela pulled through. So, whatever you think on paper, they have to win this game today. Three and two. Now Devers took a shot right there. Hanging changeup. Those are a big mistake. I mean, lefties. You see a changeup up in the zone like that. Look at his eyes, how they glide up. Oh, he sees it and he is, he wants to demolish. And he just misses it. Ooh, throw it again. <laughs> Gotta be careful here. Soto gets the head start, and it's ball four. Came up and in, Devers draws the walk. So he's on base for the second straight time. Soto's been on base both times. Now you get at least I think what you would feel like for the Dominican side would be a favorable matchup. Jimenez, the right-handed slugger against his lefty. And a guy that absolutely devours left-handed hitting. It's purely a hitter that Dominican have. Elo Jimenez is one of them. Guy who really worked on his body in the offseason, started earlier to get ready for the World Baseball Classic. A guy who we talk about, if he can just stay healthy, he will be an all star of his own. He looks good. What a matchup for him right now. What a situation and what a moment. Well, and we're going to have a meeting on the mound here to talk about this at bat. That, that number, I know it's only two games, and it's baseball, it can happen. But 0 for 16 with this lineup in two games with runners in scoring position. Now they got to earn it. They're definitely working hard to earn that. You know it happens though. You know where everybody it, it just takes one. And that's what happens when you're over 16. The good thing about this is I don't necessarily want to talk about the negative but they've had 16 chances. So I'd rather have my 16 chances than just say half of that eight chances in this tournament. And that means you're really not going to score any runs. So anytime you have the chances and the opportunities to be able to do that it's a win for the Dominican team. Now they just have to execute and do it. Now it is line to center. Base hit Jimenez. There you go. First hit with a runner in scoring position in the tournament for the Dominican Republic. It's 2 0. I know for Eloy, this, this feels really good for him. He's been talking about a moment like this since he was a little kid wearing the uniform. I think the ice has been broken. Absolute line drive up the middle. You want to, you want to earn your your RBIs. You get a pitch up in the zone like that. It doesn't try to do too much to it. Right up the box. And Montez, the center fielder, yeah, the, that 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 earned a, a a run scoring dance in the dugout in the stands. Sure. Franco could be really dangerous from both sides, but especially this side of the plate. He takes a strike. And Montez playing so deep, you got all the power in this lineup. It forces maybe a different defensive alignment in yeah. the outfield. Jimenez took advantage of it. That's one thing I've noticed by the Nicaraguan outfielders. They play extremely deep. But with that being said, we've got two middle infielders that can definitely go back on balls, which they've proven they can go back on balls. So. This is a big outfield. There's a lot of room out there for base hits. Harder ballpark for home runs. Machado has seen that today. It's 
Slow chopper toward third. And a race to the bag. Alegria gets there ahead of Devers. But a run for the Dominican Republic. Middle of the third in Miami. They lead 2 0. All right, back here in Miami. We go to the bottom of the third inning. Career home run leaders among players born in the Dominican Republic. A lot of home runs. Albert got to 700 and beyond last year. Sosa, Manny, Big Poppy, Adrian Beltre, who's going to be in the Hall of Fame soon. And Nelson Cruz, second most home runs among all active players. Only Miguel Cabrera has more, a player and the general manager of this team, Dominican Republic. Look no further. The boomstick is here. And Nelson Cruz. And he looks great. His body looks great. Saw him earlier today in batting practice. And he was he was hitting balls into the Budweiser sign in left center. So wow, seven-time All-Star right there. We see his accolades. And he's he's a, a, a leader as much as he does on the field and the things he does inside that clubhouse. It's just special as it gets, man. A bilingual guy, a guy who really works hard. You know, he was a designated hitter, and he felt. You felt like he played defense with you. He was the first guy on the top step when you came down and you came in from three outs. You know, uh, the total package for what he brings to the table in Nelson Cruz. Juan Diego Montez behind of the count 0 2 against Christian Javier. 2 0. Dominican Republic leads. We'll talk about a little bit on Nelson Cruz and what he does in the Dominican Republic as well. I mean, talk about a guy who, who's donated ambulance. Donated, you know, fire trucks. He has uh, every year. He sends over 30 to 40 doctors, you know, dentists, to go out to his hometown to help kids, help anybody, free, uh, for free, no charge whatsoever. Reason why he's a, a Roberto Clemente Award winner. Yeah, one year he won the Marvin Miller Man of the Year Award. He won the Roberto Clemente Award for all the good things he's done off the field. We showed you that shot of the pavilion out there, which is packed with fans. Big windows looking out toward the skyline in downtown Miami. That's where he was hitting the ball in batting practice. Oh, he still got it. <laughs> he still has well, the a boomstick still got it. He goes, You already know. You already know. <laughs> he, he's going to have a big year for the Padres, I, I, I think. He's, he's, he's joining Soto and Machado out there in San Diego. A team that does not lack personality. Oh, no. Leighton, who has walked, pops this one up right side. It'll be Franco calling off his teammate Candelario. Two outs. So far for Christian Javier, though, it, it looks like he's settled, right? He hasn't given them it. no free passes. You got to earn everything. If you're Nicaragua against Christian Javier, he's a guy that's pounding the zone right now, especially early on with 35 pitches through three, two and two thirds. The longer he can do that, the longer he can stay on, obviously, with the pitch count, but so far he's looked dandy. Yeah, the walk to start the game since then has mostly thrown strikes, only the two strikeouts, but more efficient. I think this tournament rewards that. Alegria swings right through a first pitch fastball. The beauty about Christian Javier, right? He's not going to really fool you. He's not tricking you. It's, hey, this is what I got. Now let's see if you can hit it, right? It's, we can sit here and say, all right, a slider might be coming or a fastball, but what you see is what you get. Fastball is up in the zone, challenging you. And it doesn't have to be 99. No, it's, it's got that, a lot of spin rate on it. The horsepower halfway through just picks up on you. And as a hitter, it's very hard to hit and, and square it up. 0 oh, 2. A little bloop shot into center field, base hit. Christian Javier did him a favor right there, slowing him down a little bit with that slider. He knows it. Wanted to go back to that, that four seam fastball up in the zone, but got to give Alegria a lot of credit right there, staying through the zone, not trying to do too much, staying short with the baseball. Picked up himself a base hit. Well, that's a two out single the second hit for Nicaragua again. Just trying to hang around and who knows whether you run into a ball and maybe hit one over the wall or put together a rally. Put some pressure on the team that's the heavy favorite it's only two nothing here in the bottom of the third. 
Oscar Perez, one of the younger players on this roster. He's the DH. Curveball for a strike. That's a good pitch right there. One years old in the Mariners organization. 19th prospect. So he's got a chance. Who knows? Maybe he and Julio Rodriguez could be teammates someday. Hey. Rodriguez out in center field staring in and watching Perez fall into an 0 2 hole. Right, back to back breaking balls right here. And you can you have two options here. You can go back foot them with another slider, a harder, a tighter one, or you can just go up the ladder on them. You know Christian Javier likes to do that. So far has shown that he can do that. 0 oh 2 runner goes foul ball. I try to get it to that back foot area. Just missed a little bit. Alegria goes back. This will be pitch number 42 coming up for Javier. That's the other thing about hey, it's a little blue two out hit. The thing that it does. In the tournament format, it forces the starter to have to throw more pitches. Another 0-2. Got it. Fastball. Strike three. So not too many more pitches. Third strikeout for Christian Javier. We go to the fourth. Two nothing. Dominican Republic. Well, to account for the travel to get here for the later rounds of the tournament pools A and B are already completed so we know the four teams that are advancing to the quarterfinals in that side of the bracket Cuba and Italy after the five way tie Japan and Australia advance for pool B Pool C and D still have a few days left and really one of the big stories last night later at night out in Phoenix Team USA got pounded by Mexico Canada has looked good Mexico looked really good last night I don't know if it's too strong to say Team USA is in trouble, but well, in this tournament, yeah, I mean, you you have to make sure you you're basically in, a, in no mercy right now. You got to win every game now. Uh, that's basically what happens when you lose in a tournament like this. So now yeah, they got their their hands full for sure. They played Canada today, and Canada looked explosive on offense yesterday against an overmatched team, but still. As Willie Adames faces the new pitcher for Nicaragua. 2 0 Dominican Republic leading here. And Adames slide drive base hit against Flores. By a little bobble out there, but it doesn't cost him. Lead off single for Willie Adames. But I think the point you're making is a good one, and it applies to the Dominican Republic team here today, too. You lose a game. In this format, where you're in a pool where you have some talented teams, and from then on out, I, I know it didn't happen in Pool A. You had the five-way tie, yeah. but it, it really feels like you got to win out from there. Well, the problem is too is that you're using all your horses early on in this tournament, right? Because you want to be the first guy to get two wins. I, I think if you get two wins, you get your, your you get yourself in, in in a good kind of in a good spot to go along for the second round, right? But if you lose that game, then your your chances or your opportunities with Reusing those horses become slim. Wow. Foul ball, and it got a piece of the catcher off the bat of Candelario. Fire. Chris Graham checking on Navoa. I don't care how much gear you have uh, on. No, I tried catching, you know, Dave, one time. One time. Yeah, one time. And the first bullpen I caught was the oldest Chapman. After six pitches, I took my gear off and I said, yeah. Not cut out for this. Now that was a really bad first. No, yeah, well they, guy they just threw catch. me into the fire. They said, "All right, here, let's see if you can do it." Now, and you know me, of course, I was like, "Yeah, yeah, of course I can do it. Of course I can do it." Well, all right, we'll go. Go get Chapman in a bullpen. Yeah, that, said, yeah, that was. I'm cruel. good. You couldn't have picked a harder guy to oh, catch. Man. And you know he wasn't like that. bouncing them or anything. It, it, it was just the the catching. The, the whole catching the ball. I mean, it was it was coming at you, and at that point, I had never seen a hundred. It's an underrated part, I think, of Aroldis Chapman's career because we're a little numb now to 100 miles an hour. There's so many hard throwers. 
when he first came up it wasn't just that he was the only one he was the only one and he was throwing five six miles an hour harder than the second hardest thrower in the game it was not even close. I, I think for me too is the consistency he's had throughout his career you know over 300 saves career saves a guy that stayed healthy for his entire career. He's special my roommate in Cincinnati. He was something else pace oh. hit. Candelario pulls that one into right field. Adamas will make the turn and head to third. And so the Dominican Republic set up here in the fourth inning, leading two nothing. Runners at the corners, nobody out. Well, so far so good for for the newcomers in game two against the, with the Dominicans, Candelario and Elo Jimenez as he turns on the fastball right here. Boy, Adamas, great secondary as we can see right here. Look at him turn and go. He knows he's got to get to third base. There's not going to be that much of a throw by Bernard. Easy. He wants to get his uniform dirty. Candelario, man. Saw him earlier today, how big he was and how short he was to the baseball. Had some great years with Detroit. They were ready today. You can tell in their eyes. Or this was more of a, a message to the tournament pool. Than anything else. And we don't want to oversell it, but as Junior Tejas gets ready, really rough beginning here to the day for Flores, Fidencio Flores, the new pitcher for Nicaragua. But these are the at bats where the Dominican Republic, they got to take advantage of these opportunities. They really have not done it through two games, a game and a half. They've set the table once again. The ninth place hitter. The catcher Mejia. Gotta be careful with Mejia here. He likes to swing at the first pitch. Flores throws. Mejia on the ground base hit. Through that open hole. Adamas scores. Candelario to third. 3 nothing. We talked about it earlier. He likes to ambush first pitches. Understanding the defense, runner on first, there's always a big hole right there on the right side of the field. Gets a good pitch that he can kind of roll over on on that changeup. Look at it, just flick it. Wow, that was about to bounce. He's always been a bad ball hitter. Guy who can really control the bat. He can't believe it. Wow. It's like, hey, that's not a bad pitch. Now you're in trouble. Yeah, now, now it gets really tough because Juan Soto, who looks so locked in through two games, has singled, walked, scored two of the three runs already. Still nobody out. You got Rodriguez and Machado looming. Ball. Change up for a ball. You know, one thing I've seen so far is the ability to work the count, man. These guys haven't really been swinging out of the zone. Obviously, we saw Mejia do that right there, but. For the most part, they, they, they've been pretty controlled in the strike zone. Well, that's Juan Soto's game. Nobody's better at that than Soto. Ball Two and out. Nobody takes a pitch with more style. And he's, he's feeling the shuffle right now. And you know, when he's got that shuffle, uh oh, be careful. That's when you know. We see it from some of the grades, right? Baez, when he's locked in, he's got the seeds going. Lindor's doing his pre pre swing stuff. Miggy's kind of hitting his shoes. I mean, they all got something. They know when they're locked in, though, they're locked in. Juan Soto right now looking very hitterish. Yes. 2 0. And a liner to first, caught for a double play. Wow. It caught Colbert, but give him credit, he held on to the ball and gets two outs. How much you can do there if you're Mejia, if you're the first base runner. It was an absolute rocket for the first baseman. How much Soto can do either. Wow. My goodness. Very good play all around. Juan 
Soto sure did his job. He sure did. But sometimes even the best turns into a double play. Pitching change back right after this. But Juan Soto, now he can smile. He wasn't smiling a minute ago after he lined into a double play. Good at bat. They take Flores out of the game to bring in Junior Tejas, who threw the ball pretty well against Puerto Rico on Saturday in the first game for Nicaragua. Trying to help Nicaragua get through this top of the fourth. It's 3 0. Julio Rodriguez on the ground. Pass the diving attempt of Alegria, and it skips into left field. Base hit. Candelario scores 4 0. Rodriguez comes through and Machado is going to come up for the third time. What a day it's been for him. He's 0 for 2. That doesn't really tell the story. Two deep fly balls towards center field. One to left center in the first, then in the third out towards right center field. Both of them, according to StatCast, would have been home runs at his home ballpark in San Diego Petco Park. And we found a new metric for you, Yonder. Uh, he only needs three platanos. <laughs> That's it. Platano power, baby. Uh. He must have had a platano now in the third at bat. We'll see if it works. Okay, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so just that close to a two home run game. Well, they would have been gone in San Diego and Petco Park. Both so. of them. Which is pretty uh. interesting because you don't think of Petco as like a great home run no. hitter's ballpark. A little quality at bats, though. I, I, that's what I'd rather see that, especially early on like this. Oh, needs more Plantanos. Center fielder Montez for out number three. Like a hundred more on that one. More. <laughs> Still, a couple more runs for the Dominican Republic, and they lead over Nicaragua. Plantano power. That's what Yonder calls it. For nothing. We talk about pool play. Now that's a pool. <laughs> On the field and off. Pool these standings. <laughs> Venezuela sitting under a palm tree today. They get the day off after beating Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic to start their tournament. What a start for Venezuela. I mean, everybody looked at this pool, this group of five teams, and figured only two get to advance, and you have three what you would consider true baseball powerhouse programs. Dominican, Puerto Rico, and Venezuela. And Venezuela's already played those two teams and beaten them both. Colbert out to right center field. Rodriguez for out number one here in the uh, bottom of the fourth. It's funny with Venezuela and the history of the World Baseball Classic. You know, I remember in 13, 2013 and 2017, they were also the, if not the powerhouse or favorites to, to advance and, and obviously being in the finals. And that, that hasn't happened. That had at all. And you know, there was one of these teams this year where they were very quiet. A lot of talk with Puerto Rico, a lot of talk with Dominican, especially in this pool. But Venezuela kind of stayed quiet under the radar, and look at them now—they're they're absolutely playing and also on all cylinders. Here's Alex Blandino. He goes after the first bit. It's an interesting point because the Dominican is a past champion in the. World Baseball Classic Puerto Rico two different times has been the runner up lots of wins lots of success right. and you, you do look at Venezuela's history in this event and it hasn't been great despite a lot of great players they've been outscored they haven't really brought the pitching and you know performance yesterday by Pablo Lopez I mean that was outstanding you know what he was able to do and we talk about Luis Garcia coming out of the pen in the first game against the Dominican Republic it, it, it's been uh, you know just lights out. Pure, pure, clean baseball. Dominican fans enjoying this one so much. I, despite all the talent on on the rosters in this pool D, I do think almost everybody circled this Dominican team as the team to beat. And yeah, Venezuela took them down right Absolutely, away. Absolutely, yeah. Does not mean that the championship hopes are gone for this Dominican team Blandino out to center field that one carrying pretty well out to Machado territory but not quite two down. I put a good noise on that. 
Good fastball. And I mean, look, this is Christian Javier right now, right? He, he's just going after hitters. He, he's trying to get through four and possibly go, go an extra inning or inning in a third. It's been a, a stress free start for Christian Javier. That toe is powerful when you want to continue to pitch in this tournament. How many stress stresses have you had? And he certainly hasn't had many. That's a good point. Just a couple of bats with runners in scoring position. Only two hits, both singles. Hey. Zick Bernard takes strike one. Well, it's gotta, they got to have a book on Bernard. I mean, it's been a steady dose of, of, of breaking balls and change ups. See if he sneaks one up in the zone right here. These teams all find information. Even if players aren't in the big leagues or in affiliated professional ball, they find info. Isn't it incredible how the game has changed, right? Before, you, you might. Might call a buddy if he's seen a player. You might watch some batting practice. Oh, okay, that guy looks like that swing is geared towards left field. So maybe we'll pitch him a certain way. Now, no matter where a player plays around the globe, you can find information. Yes, got it. That was nasty. Talk about a sweeper. The new pitch invented in baseball right now. Well, Christian Javier certainly has that one, and plus more. Such a great sight for this World Baseball Classic here in Miami. The passion of the baseball fans who support the teams from their country, Dominican Republic, just an overwhelming number of fans. Their first two games here inside this ballpark. Rafael Devers takes a strike, big slow breaking ball from Tejas. 4 0, fifth inning. Makes these games so much fun. Yeah. Now one thing I'm noticing from Devers is how he screwed up on the box a little bit. You know, a lot of times, most guys will stand where everybody stands, but if you see him, he's kind of three or four inches in front of where most guys stand. I like it. Yeah, he moves around the box. I, I love that. You're athletic enough to do that. Some guys can do it, some guys can't. I think also in this tournament in particular you're facing some guys that you might however you want to put it maybe sort of throw below the hitting speed below the usual right. big league speed. Uh, I mean uh, I never could do it. Uh, I know a lot of guys that couldn't do it but boy, I, I wish I, I, I was able to do that you know where, where you can move around the box go up go down. See most guys kind of step on the back side of that line and that's usually where you're stepping in the first at bat now he's just gone up. Ball to kind of get those breaking balls as they're coming down into the wheelhouse. Talk about barrels. I think that's probably the idea. He missed a, a slow breaking ball and he was not happy that he missed it in his previous at bat. I'm going to scoot up. Backyard baseball, baby. He's doubled and walked. Pulls that one foul. Hard hit ball, but foul. So we've decided you couldn't catch and you couldn't move around the box. We need to pump you up a little bit and, and come up with a list of the things that you did do well. well. I mean, I, 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 like Miguel Cairo used to say, you got to stay humble in this game. So I, I just stay humble, and just rattle off a few things that you struggled yeah, with. That's about it. I could hit a little bit. Yeah, I'll go with that. That's about it. Foul back to the screen. It's two and two. I can talk my way to end through anything at first base. Tell a guy not to steal. Uh, a lot of times I will tell Tuve, don't go anywhere, man. I'm bored around here. I don't know if you're Sean Casey territory, but no, you were, no, you were no. Mr. Social over there at first base. Bilingual. Uh, yeah, you had that advantage. Oh, Hard hit ball. Good. Speared by the shortstop, Leighton, playing over on the shift. Another nice play by him. Absolute rocket. The good thing about this play, though, it was a long hop. Doesn't matter how hard it was hit, as long as you get the long hop, you can stay behind it. Use those soft hands. Look how long that is. Look how behind it he is. Make it more of a can of corn than anything else. But the, the key to this whole thing is the long hop and staying behind it. Get your eyes behind that glove so you can track it all the way in and then 
after that you just do the easiest thing and play catch with your first baseman. And if you're watching the World Baseball Classic for the first time it is true that we're playing with 2022 MLB rules so once the major league season starts this year of course the big over shift will not be allowed right. Yeah, that could possibly be a base hit. And you know, I saw the other day hey. spring training game a left hander hit a ground ball to the shortstop the shortstop field to and I said to my buddy next to me I said wow I haven't seen that in five six years. For a lefty. Hits a ground ball of short and short stops right there. And it was great. It, it, it just felt like that's our that's the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> I didn't like the shift, but then again, I was a left-handed hitter. You know, they, they took away a lot of hits. Jimenez is a little up in the batter's box. Hits a ground ball. Nobody's there. Seeing I. Second two for two for Elias. Yeah. See that breaking ball right there. Look how he stays through it though. He just continues to fight with that, that bottom hand. Continues to guide that ball up the middle. And a little bit more, he just kind of rolls over as a can of corn to the shortstop on a routine ground ball, but he just fights, 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 fights all the way through the zone. Good hitters tend to do that more than not. On to Franco has a walk and it's hit into a fielder's choice. 0 for 1. Four runs, eight hits for the Dominican. No runs, only two singles for Nicaragua. Trying to stay close in this game. And Franco's moved up. I don't know. I, maybe there was a little discussion in the dugout about against some of these softer throwing Nicaraguan pitchers. Yeah, it could be. Uh, it could be something that that they must have talked about. and said, "Hey, you know, this guy throws a lot of breaking balls. Let's just let's just get up on him." I used to do that with guys that you know I used to face not that many but R.A. Dickey and I used to get up in the box and I was the, the, the wording was if it was up let it fly let it fly if it was down let it go and it worked out for me but yeah with guys like this who, who more than not they're not throwing that many fastballs you want to get up on the box and let it eat. If you want to rhyme it, if it's high, let it fly. If it's low, let it go. One of those. Yeah, I mean, it's, you it's, it's don't the, have to rhyme it. It's, it's the yonderisms. Uh, quite a bit. At times, they'll say <laughs> those things. And, uh, it is it's, what it is. Hey, I'm enjoying them. <laughs> Who says you need to rhyme? Man, overrated. Jimenez is usually not known for his base running. Two to Franco. Ooh, drives that one to center field. Hard hit ball. Montez all the way back to the wall. And another catch of the wall. He hangs on to the ball as he hits the track. Two down. Wow. And the mustache is intact. It is intact, but he has made some incredible plays all day long. As he's going back into the wall, he feels the warning track, hits the wall first, and makes the catch. Warner Franklin just can't believe it. He is stunned. That is so tough to do. The, the contact with the ball before the ball was in his glove. More platanos. <laughs> or more, or more curls. More One curls. of the two. <laughs> 405 feet, 105 miles an hour off the bat. And hey. what did he get for it? An OUT. Oh, you. Adamas has a base hit. I give Nicaragua some credit. The, the defense was it was ugly in game one. Yeah. And to start this game today, two real bad misplays. And since then, we've had three or four really spectacular plays. One, two. Uh, really good plays, obviously by by Baez and Montes. Leiton has made Leiton. two two tough plays. Colbert had a nice catch on a pop up with his back to the infield. And I don't know what's going to happen in this game, but they, they, it's a team that should be proud where they're at right now. We, we 
talked about how they got here, beating Brazil in the qualifiers. I mean, nobody had them to win, and, and sure enough, they're here. It's their first chance to play in a World Baseball Classic. He got it. So Adamas chases the breaking ball through all of that. No runs, just a hit. Mid five, it's four nothing. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of World Baseball Classic Inc. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Oh, they brought the camera out. You and I were out there getting our workout in this morning. I didn't realize there was a camera there. Grinding away, baby. Oh, no, wait. That's right. not us. Looks like a pretty good way to get a workout in, though. Christian Javier out of the game, but especially as it went on, he was really, really good today. Yeah, well, we talked about it early on. He was using that fastball. Once he started dominating with the fastball, he went to work with the slider, as we can see with the four strikeouts he had. Those sliders were, were, were the go to kind of diminish the hitters, the Nicaraguan hitters, but sure enough, it all started with the fastball, and he was electric. Retired 11 of the last 12 hitters he faced, was throwing strikes. Now he gives way to Diego Castillo, reliever for the Seattle Mariners, 59 games last year. We well, know one thing about Diego Castillo is a lot of sliders and a lot of two seamers just like that. His stuff is as powerful as it gets, and you know, for the Nicaraguans, we haven't seen a ground ball yet. Well, with Diego Castillo, he he likes he likes the ground ball. Very different style pitcher than Christian Javier in terms of the results it produces. But Novoa got that one in the air. Rodriguez has been busy today. One away. He likes to give Eloy Jimenez a chance to throw the ball back in. Get involved, stay involved. <laughs> I'll catch them all, you throw them all back. That's the that's the beauty of you know the game right now. You can have a guy who's 93, 95 miles an hour with a lot of Horsepower at the top of the zone, and all of a sudden now they change it on you and they say, No, we're going soft now. We're going to start throwing bowling balls and sliders. It's also a, a mark on Dominican bullpen. Orlando Valle, 0 for 1, his second at bat. Right there, that sinker at the knees. He hits that spot, he's almost impossible to hit. Yeah. The compliment to it. And I remember facing him when he was with Tampa, and it was Alvarado and Castillo, and he really didn't know where the ball was going. But this stuff was not a fun at bat, I can tell you that. Bounce that one, the change up. And now he's with Seattle, and he's he's a part of the the Bomberos with the Seattle Mariners bullpen. Big reason why the Mariners got back to the playoffs last year and broke their long drought with those yeah. those guys in the bullpen. Huh. They had the lead in, in the sixth inning. Good luck. It was it was almost every time it was over. Valle can be a pest hanging around. Yeah. A couple of foul balls. It's still one and two. Nicaragua will play its final game in this pool D tomorrow against Venezuela. Dominican Republic tomorrow gets Israel before what has a chance to be the best game of the entire set of pool games. Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic perhaps playing for a spot in the quarterfinals. The way is shaping out, yes. But do we know? No. We don't know yet. Sure, the team from Israel is is thinking, hey, oh yeah, we got a chance to pull off an upset and maybe get ourselves in that mix. They beat this team from Nicaragua yesterday. Wow. Wow. One thing we know about Israel, they're going to be prepared. All right, we talked about the analytics department, how prepared they are going into this tournament. We saw it yesterday, especially later on against Loizaga. The approach they took, Kevin Euclid, their hitting coach. I mean. You can tell it, it's a well prepared team with a big stage for tonight.
could be, I think, a fun game tonight. Big bouncer to first. The feed to Castillo, two down. Talking about it, Israel and Puerto Rico tonight at 7 Eastern from here in Miami. Puerto Rico with a really remarkable comeback last night, but it fell short against Venezuela. And maybe that momentum will carry into today. You make an interesting point, though, about the team from Israel. It, the whole thing changed for them yesterday when Loisaga came in the game. You would figure it would be the opposite, but I think what you were talking about is they've had so much help from front offices around the game. They have so much information with that team that maybe a guy who is a big leaguer in a weird way was an easier task for Israel and they're going to see big league pitchers who have a lot of information about them tonight. That's 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 the key word right there information. Where you can face guys with a lot of information you can kind of gear up for. Where you're facing a guy that you've never seen before. It's all a matter of learning within the process, right? In the present. So we'll see how that plays out tonight. Oh, yeah. Don't dismiss the chances of Israel pulling off what would be an upset win. Two and one. What a catch. In center field for Juan Diego Montes. I know Castillo likes to throw his slider, but I would like to see a really power, power, mono, mono two seamer right here. See if he throws it. Well, he did, but he pulled it off the outside. Three and one. That time just rushing that left shoulder a little bit, being a little too quick with his front side. That's why Mejia was kind of looking at him and telling him, hey, direct, direct it to me. All that movement goes right at him. I want to throw that ball through the catcher, not at the catcher. 3 1. That's a good one right there. Hey. Little cement mixer slider right there. Those are unhittable to hit. More than not, you think they're going to break and they don't break. It's, it just stays upright. That's nasty. Loves to throw that slider. Three two. Got him with it. Montez can't believe it. So a one two three inning for Castillo. We're through five in Miami. First game of the day, the third day of Pool D here in Miami, Nicaragua and the Dominican Republic. Two countries with incredible passion for baseball, one with a much longer history of success at the highest levels. Nicaragua still looking for its first win in World Baseball Classic play. This is the first time they've had a chance to play in this great tournament. And they've hung in there today with yeah. the powerful Dominican team. It's 4 0. Inning number six, Candelario takes ball one from Tez. He's done a nice job since coming in. Well, one thing is turning for Nicaragua. They're going to give you everything they got. It's a team that's not going to back down by any means. Slow bouncer past the mound to second. And the play to first for the out. That's not Alex Blandino over there at second base any longer. One thing is certain too. It, 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 it's been stress free kind of you know after those four runs other than that you know not much has happened Soto obviously hit that line drive double play kind of stopped the momentum there a little bit for, for the Dominican team but hey. is, has done a, a fantastic job kind of keeping the hitters off balance it was a big play in this game Soto's line drive goes down the right field line maybe scores a couple runs still nobody out oh. who knows who maybe knows? Dominican might have scored a bunch of runs in that inning. Instead, Nicaragua has kept it relatively close. Ivan Marine is the player now at second base, by the way. Mejia, top spin liner to right. Two down. That's 
Baye over there now. He's shifted from left to right field. So Bernard has come out of the game. Dwight Britton is the new left fielder out there. So some changes for Nicaragua. There's Dwight. Here's Juan Soto. Strike one. Another guy who screwed up on the box a little bit as well, but oh, Soto, man, it, it's just a beauty to watch. Ball, ball. And the way he takes pitches, the way he, he goes after pitches, the approach factor. I mean, this is a guy three quarters, arm slot, likes to go over the top at times too, but it's a favorable at bat right here for Soto. He's had three graded bats already. Been on base twice. It's bad luck in the third one. If I were a Padres fan, I'd be very excited about the way he looks. Oh yeah. He was healthy, slimmed down, having was having a great spring training. It's out into deep right field. It is gone into the second deck. Wow, Juan Soto. Tejas could just smile. I don't know if, he, if he's thinking, hey, I just gave up an absolute bomb to Soto, but with that being said, that swing was beautiful. We were talking about it earlier. It's a bad matchup to, for Tejas. Soto looked really good taking those pitches, and oh, the party has started here at Lone Depot Park. And Soto has been right in the middle of it. <laughs> they got the Dominican swag of itself. Tejas could only smile. Oh man! Swing. Look at this curveball. Just hung. Look how connected with his backside is. The two-hand finish. Boy, when he hit it, he knew it was gone, and so did this whole stadium. Absolute bomb. Sometimes that's all you could do. Tip your cap with a smile. Juan Soto makes it five nothing. Well, that was pretty exciting. Juan Soto into the second deck here in Miami. His first home run of the World Baseball Classic. Joaquin Acuna takes over for Nicaragua. It's 5 0. Hey. And a strike to Julio Rodriguez. He has just been totally locked in today. Oh. And going back two days ago to their first game, I have Shohei Otani. He's been unbelievably great for Japan. Sami Perez, Anthony Santander for Venezuela. But Juan Soto looks like he wants to be the best player in this tournament. Yeah, he sure does. Rodriguez, a pop up, shallow center. Montez playing so deep. Long way to go, and it'll be the shortstop, Leighton, for another back to the infield catch over the shoulder style. Made a couple of those today. Soto pads the lead. What a swing and the emotion for the Dominicans. Five nothing Dominican Republic with the lead here as we go to the bottom of the six against Nicaragua looking for their first win in this World Baseball Classic. And another bullpen arm for the Dominican team, Rafael Montero, who pitched on the World Series winning Astros team in 2022. A big part of their bullpen. First chance to see him in this year's World Baseball Classic. Well, Rafael Montero, fast boss. Change of sliders. And we know him, obviously, with the Astros signed a three year deal, $34.5 million back in November 15. This is a guy, a quality arm that they can use out of the pen, a failed starter. 
but a guy they heavily rely on in the bullpen and right now getting some work in here against Nicaragua but there's a first career world baseball classic appearance I'm sure he's very excited his first pitch is grounded foul only two hits for Nicaragua against the combination of Christian Javier Montero's teammate in Houston Diego Castillo and now Montero and it's been the Juan Soto show on offense. Slow roller. Adames has it. And he throws a little bit high, but a good stretch over there at first base. One away. One thing we're going to see from Rafael Montero is that devastating two seamer. He likes to pound the right handers with. You see Adames there. Kind of rush it a little bit. Great job by Candelario's right there to stay on the bag, but. No question about it with Montero. It's sneaky, it's sinking, and it is heavy. They got an arsenal in, it, in Houston, don't they? Yeah, it's incredible. And it's not just free agent signs, they develop their own players so well. Christian Javier, I mean, he's turned into one of the best pitchers in the sport. What he signed for 10,000 bucks as a 16 year old yep. amateur. Off prospect radars, not scouted by many organizations. Including the postseason last year. Terrell had 81 appearances last year. So this is a very reliable guy who always wants the ball. And I'm sure it's a good point you make. I, I'm sure that for this particular tournament and the ramp up to the regular season, there is some caution from the Houston side about just oh, making sure he doesn't get overworked right in March after the heavy workload all the way through the end of October last year. He just missed there with that four seam. Good pitch. Oh, it's that slow delivery and then very explosive. I'll agree uh, it goes down swinging that's explosive. I didn't really mess around right there with a two seam. He went straight four seam on him. It's just a very lively arm. See that four seam right there with the spin. More than not, you're going to be underneath that pitch. I mean, he's like barely a setup guy for the Astros. <laughs> they have so many yeah, talented you pitchers. Pray you, you got <laughs> Ryan Presley, their closer, got the final out of the World Series. So two down, two quick outs for Montero. Lucar Perez never played above single A and struggled even at that level as a hitter, still very young. Too. That's what velocity does to you, movement, right? That pitch wasn't that well located. Middle, middle, hard at the plate, but the action that he gets from it, as a hitter, you've never faced them before. More than not, you're just going to be a little bit off on him. Slow roller to second. Nicely scooped up by Wander Franco. And that was a stress free inning for Rafael Montero. What else is new? We go to the seventh, five nothing. New catcher comes in for Nicaragua. This game moves to the seventh inning. Rodolfo Bonet is now the catcher. Acuna is still out there on the mound. Nicaragua just has not been able to get the offense going in their three games. And so that's put so much pressure on their pitching against these powerful lineups they face. Manny Machado leads off for the Dominican Republic. And he drives that one to right center field. He finally got one here. It is gone. Oh. 
Forget hitting into center field. Go somewhere else. Well, he definitely had his platinum power right there. We talked earlier about his approach. When he's going good, he's going from center to right center, and sure enough, right there, he showed that power to right center. What a beautiful swing. Talked about it earlier in the cage today. How you feeling? He says, man, I feel connected. I feel like good things are about to happen. Oh, there's Manny right there. Doing his thing, El Ministro de la Defensa. Well, he's hit two other balls farther today that weren't home runs. A oh, curtain call from these great Dominican fans for the great Manny Machado. Oh, look how connected that is right there with his backside and how flat his swing is, if not one of the more flatter swings in today's day and age. That one hit well out to left center. Britain tracks it down. You can notice the swing plane. I'm noticing he blew a bubble as he hit a home run. That's hard to do. Almost. What are we calling that? The home run sash? Uh, I'm gonna have to find out. Yeah, I, you know who to ask. <laughs> uh, Juan Soto, Manny Machado, just a group of tremendous at bats today. Those two guys, they can lead you to a championship. And their teammates in the big leagues. I'm sure if you're a Padre and watching this game, you're beyond excited. It's a little scary for everybody else, I think. Jimenez, a high pop up behind second. Two down. The second home run for the Dominican Republic in. Their first game against Venezuela, they didn't hit one. I mean, we've, we've talked about it today with the balls that Machado alone has hit. This is not a home run, where uh, not a ballpark where you you figure your best game plan is to just play home run derby. This is this is one of the tougher home run ballparks in baseball. Ball one to Wanda Franco. I know they've made some dimensions. Shortage in the past year or two. But sure enough, I mean, it's still a big ballpark. Yeah, the last few years, a couple different versions of moving the fences in, making it just a little more home run hitter friendly. He, Machado hit that last one to a spot where they have made a change, almost like the exact spot where the, the change happened. So I don't know if it would have been a home run in the old configuration or not. It's two and one. I think we look at this game today, and if you're the Dominican offense, right? Team that came into this game hitting 176. You, you got to feel good about it. You got to feel about where they're at. A lot of hard hit balls in this game. Ground ball to short. Franco thrown out. Manny Machado, his first home run of this World Baseball Classic. Seventh inning stretch, bottom of the seventh now. Juan Soto and Manny Machado have each hit home runs today. Teoscar Hernandez takes over in right field for Eloy Jimenez. And a new pitcher on the mound as well for the team from the Dominican. Cesar Valdez. Valdez first pitch slider misses. One of the legends in the uh, Dominican Winter League. Guy who they admire and love. He got a huge ovation here when they announced his name. Guy who's been in Triple A with a 3.94 ERA doesn't walk anybody. He's coming right after you. But a guy in the winter league though, six and zero with a 1.51 ERA, and a guy who is very vocal. Pays for for a really really powerful team over there. He's 37 years old, and who knows, Those maybe leaders. a little. Maybe a little amped up here. The second World Series, uh, World Baseball Classic appearance, but plays for Los Tigres del Licey. Uh, you can hear the 
the fans. Uh, part of it is, hey, they're up six nothing. Part of it is their admiration for this guy. They're excited to see him in this game. Okay. He missed low with his changeup. So, oh, there goes that. Talk yeah, about he's coming right after you. <laughs> except for that. That's a big deal for Cesar Valdez. So now we've got Marine. His first at bat of the day. And Valdez needs to just find that strike zone. Yeah, I think just settle down here. I try to do too much right now. Kind of aiming at it at the ball, just aiming when he's throwing. Just let it go. Just that's a good visit right there. Swung down a little bit. Get a visit here. But more than not, the good thing about Dominican here with this six. Six runs they put on them on the board. They're not using their their horses, right? They they can kind of save their guys. So now you're thinking about okay, how can I get ready for tomorrow? How can I get ready for the next day? Wellington Sabeda also takes a, a nice little talk. He says that, but it's yeah. probably probably not a whole lot you can tell Cesar about this that he doesn't been around know already. But I think you make you make a good point here. You get a chance to get him in the game and. Get his feet wet in this tournament, a reward for all the great work he's done over the years. But also, you want to make sure you don't make it a little more interesting. You don't want to then have to go back to, all right, we got to get our real high leverage guys back involved in this game. We have a chance to kind of cruise to the end of this one and get Absolutely. set up for tomorrow. Well, if that's the case, I would like to see Robinson Cano. I would like to see yeah. Nelson Cruz, yeah. right? Yeah. If you want to be fresh, you want to be as fresh as possible. Going forward, moving forward here. Plus, you never know. You get a chance to get in that bat in tournament conditions. The last time we saw a team, Puerto Rico, run through all of its yes, options off correct. the bench, you, you could have a game where you got to mix and match, and you need those guys. Full count here after he's already issued a walk. What a what a game yesterday, huh? It How was Puerto was Rico crazy. just just fought their way. Obviously, we know what Venezuela did, but a lot of heart, a lot of character was shown by, by Molina's team. 3 2. He issued another walk. So, ball four, and that is definitely not what the Dominican wanted to see with a 6 0 lead. Parts of five years in the big leagues never has been able to have. A sustained run of success, certainly not the way he has in the Dominican Winter League. And I'm sure already talking through some options if Cesar Valdez can't find the strike zone. Well, we know one thing, he can go long, right? He's always been a starter, especially with the Dominican Winter League. He's been that guy who's Started for you, you know, six starts, 53 innings pitched in last year's Dominican Winter League season. This is Dwight Britton who is getting his first at bat of the game. And he's behind at a count 0 2. Last night, Venezuela, after an inning and a half, was up 7 0 on Puerto Rico. Wow. It was shocking. And then into the fifth inning, into the bottom of the fifth, up nine to one. And that's when the comeback started. Got it. So there's a strikeout for Valdez. Maybe that'll help settle him down a little bit. Yeah. Well, last night you talk about, as we see here, this changeup, which, by the way, Pedro Severino, backup catcher for the Dominican team, said, I don't even know where it's going when he throws that changeup. But it's a good one, and it's a dandy. But last night's game, going back to it, I mean, it, it was just a thrill to watch how, how everything kind of unraveled for the fans, and they they, it, they were they were hit away from a lot of things happening. There was 
nothing. Really big double play when Puerto Rico was was on the verge of they were already back in the game, but maybe pulling off what would have been the biggest comeback win in World Baseball Classic history. Well, one thing we saw from both of those teams is that bullpen and how nasty they are, right? We saw a lot of good arms coming out. It was a lot of fun. That ball hit pretty well by Bonet to left field. All the way back, Soto near the wall to make the catch. Now that would have changed the feel of this game had that one carried a little bit better. Oh, yeah. Got a hanging changeup right there. Just a little bit out in front of it. Juan Soto was able to track it down. So two outs, two on. Be interesting to watch tonight. Puerto Rico needs more from Javi Baez. They need more from Kike Hernandez. They've, they've some of those veteran players that they're going to lead on. Francisco Lindor, even. I mean, he's had pretty good at bats through a couple games. I would like to see the first day lineup. Uh, Christian Vasquez DHing Maldonado back behind the plate. Kind of that same same route where you can do a lot of different things, right? You can do hit and runs. These are guys that can handle the bat. They can play small ball. They can allow these these other guys to kind of set their roles and where they're at in, in their lineup. Obviously, I'm not imagining I'm not making the lineup, but I, I really felt really confident with that first day lineup against Nicaragua where you know, last night was a little different. I'm, I'm guessing that. We're going to see that tonight, or something close to it. 0 and 2. Orlando Valle 0 for 2 today. Back to back walks to start this inning. A rally for free for Nicaragua. Are they feeling it? They want to see their hero finish this inning. On the ground to first, and that's exactly what he'll do. So good for Cesar Valdez. Not happy with himself after those walks, but he gets through it. We go to the eighth at six nothing. Just a couple innings away from the first win of this World Baseball Classic for the Dominican Republic. They lead six nothing, eighth inning now. Willie Adames has one hit today. Will lead off here in the eighth. Let's see if the Dominican can add to its lead against Acuna. Ball one. to see how Rodney Linares his coaching staff map things out the rest of the way with Adamas with Jeremy Pena who figure is going to play a lot Wanda Franco Get a little bit of a log jam see how he doles out the at bats hey. Adamas has looked pretty good at the plate today well one thing too is you want to give these guys as much confidence as possible right heading into tomorrow heading into Wednesday this is going to be your lineup moving forward you, you want to get them as many at bats as possible it's also nice to have that that bench where you can lean on and give them one at bat. And you know they haven't seen a your bench hasn't seen a game in, in, in a good five days, five six days. So other than pregame, have they played? So get a little game action in. Be more prepared for a really critical spot where your team might need you. Not getting the signs that he wanted, so time. We'll count three and two.
Segura right there. But that's another player that I, I think you could see a scenario where oh, yeah. big at bat late in a game, specific matchup. They need a knock. He could be a good weapon. So I think you'd like to see him get a chance to get an at bat in this tournament. Or what a hitter, huh? Well, he's one of those guys who talking the other day, Luis Arise maybe, okay, all you need is a base hit he's in a big spot. Who, yeah, I mean, Jason you're right, is one you're of those. Right. You just need the ball in play, a line drive somewhere. That's a hit. Adamas beats out the infield hit. That was speed right there. That's Adamas smelling a base hit. Look at him. He was smelling it. Look at that smile. As soon as he hit that ball, he said, oh, no, 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 hold on a second. I'm, I'm going to dig my way into this base hit. Obviously, Leighton tried to do everything possible to make that throw, but. Here's Candelario. Nobody out. To second. They'll go to second to get the out there. And then the ball slips out of the hands of Leighton. And actually, I mean, it didn't slip out. It hit Willie Adamas. He, just he threw hit it, it into his he back. It right into his back. <laughs> Whoops. Adamas <laughs> is like, man, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, Lord. You don't see that every day. Oh, you know, it's what we call pop up slide right there. Right at the bag. You see that face. Oh, it's going to hurt tomorrow. Ball one here to the catcher, Mejia. All right, I guess he's all right. <laughs> Trying to explain to everybody in there what just happened. Hey, by the way, you were talking about tonight, Puerto Rico, their lineup. We got a sneak peek of what the lineup will look like. Lindor, Kike Hernandez, MJ Melendez is going to be the DH in tonight's game. Martin Maldonado is behind the plate, but no Vasquez in the lineup. That one is hit hard to right center field and caught on the move. What a catch by Valle. And the runner doesn't know that the ball was caught, so the throw's going to go back to first. And Candelario just kept on going. You mean he caught it? That's a double play. And the side is retired. Wow. Baye banged up, but hangs on to the ball. Nice play for Nicaragua. The defense for Nicaragua has been a story in both directions in this World Baseball Classic. Norlando Valle has made two really good plays. That was early in the game when he was playing left field. And now in right field, off this line drive, Candelario was sure it was going to get by, and it did not. Unbelievable right there. Talk about an athlete. Guy who can play multiple positions. The awareness of not only catching it, but getting right back up on his feet and throwing that ball back in. For that double play. Of course, he could have walked it back in for a double play, but still, give him credit for a heck of a play. Well, Diego Montes has played well defensively. Yeah. I, I think this team from Nicaragua, they do deserve some credit because yep. the defense in game one was ugly, and they had a couple misplays early today, and they've just piled up really good defensive plays since then. This would be 10 nothing. Who knows what the lead the game might be over by now yeah. if they hadn't played such good defense. Well, it certainly has been all domination for the Dominican Republic team today. That's kind of yeah. what you expect from this team. That was a swing. Montez just couldn't hold up. Strikeout for Cesar Valdez. And it hasn't been done, you know, by stealing bases or 
taking a lot of the extra base just been inning to inning chipping away as we see that change of screwball type of action dropping off the table. Good pitching good de defense timely hitting. Right at the knees Brandon Leighton. Shortstop 0 for 2 with a walk. I mean, he's made two, three, maybe four really good defensive plays himself. Anyway, I'm impressed because after the first game, I thought, well, I mean, you get no chance as an underdog if you just give extra outs and, and play as sloppy as they did defensively. They've cleaned it up. A little dribbler. Valdez is going to let it go and it's going to stop right on the line. Fair ball. Good grounds crew. <laughs> For a hitter. For a hitter. At Cesar, what do you think about is. him? He don't like it too much. <laughs> swinging old, swinging bunt. Tomorrow, doesn't matter. The box score will be a line drive up the middle. Tone will take the hit. <laughs> Look at that screen. How do you do that? Teach me that. <laughs> Just the third hit today for Nicaragua. And they hadn't had a hit since the third inning until that one. Since this guy, Alegria, had a base hit. So Nicaragua will have one more game tomorrow. They're the team that gets the final day in this pool D off. And it's almost certainly going to be their final game of this World Baseball Classic. They'll take on Venezuela tomorrow. That is a fair ball just inside the bag down the line. Leighton rounding to third. He'll get the stop sign there. Teoscar Hernandez comes up throwing into second, though, with a double. Benjamin Alegria. That's a good piece of hitting right there. Same with that baseball. Seeing it very deep. Pitch was outside. You see that change up screwball about this throws. Look at him go with it. His whole body's going that way. The bat's going that way. The barrel's going that way. And all you can do after that, Candelario, is just hope and dive. Second and third for Nicaragua with only one out. Base hit here, and who knows, might spring the Dominican coaching staff into action. Ball one off the inside to Perez. Well, at this point, right now in this game, you'll trade away a run for an out. 21 years old at the plate against 37 years old on the mound. And the 21 year old is ahead 2 0. Not falling for the tricks. The old Wiley veteran. That's ball three. Here is just thinking, hey man, let's just you're gonna walk them, get the double play in action. There's a strike. Hey. There it is. And while that is true, I mean, when you're up six nothing in the eighth inning, the last thing you want is free base. Yeah, runners. no. You, you, you want to go right out, you guys. You, you got to make them earn it. Did not. He walked him. So now the bases are loaded. I think I'm the Dominican team. I'm getting somebody warmed up, or I'll be moving around trying to see what's going on. Now there he is. And I think he's seen enough right now too. Right, Grand Slam range. A situation where you know, Grand Slam and all of a sudden now it gets tricky. W. Luis Garcia. 
at the wall. Ball with the right though. And it's interesting, Nicaragua is going to make a move here. While well, the Dominican sends the pitching coach out for a conference on the mound and probably just to, as much as anything stall for some time and let that bullpen get revved up. This is the young man we saw in game one. I mean it was it was an impressive moment. Oh yeah. Elian Miranda he took Marcus Stroman deep. Stroman had been kind of cruising along and hadn't given up a run. It was a one nothing ball game and Miranda tied the game up with one swing. He's only 23 years old. He can hit a little bit though. He's got some pop. Got to be careful with these breaking balls. Don't want to ele elevate these breaking balls. Want to make sure if you're missing you're missing down. Bases loaded one out. And that's a line drive base hit into left field. Heredia wasn't waiting around. One run is in. Here comes the throw home. The tag out at home play. Boy, that, that, that is a bad miscue by the third base coach right there. You're down six nothing with one out. Understanding you got Soto in left field who has a really good arm. I mean he wasn't even touching third base while Soto had that ball. There was no need to send him right there. It's just a rally killer. Soto comes right through that baseball, completely misses the cutoff, and throws a strike to Mejia. You, know, you talk about rally. That's a situation where he's sending him the whole way. He put the stop sign, puts the stop sign, and he just kept going. Oh no! Huge mistake by Nicaragua. Yeah, oh my goodness! Just ran right through that stop sign, so they get a run. Good at bat, but an out. Pitching change. We'll be right back. Well, Nicaragua with a spirited rally here in the bottom of the eighth inning, and yet a base running mistake has taken some of the steam out of that rally. Nonetheless, pitching change for the Dominican team. Luis Garcia coming off a great year with the Padres, pitched an inning against Venezuela and gave up a run. Well, Luis Garcia with the San Diego Padres, we know one thing he's got a really good fastball, 97 98, a really good slider as well. Had dinner with him not too long ago, and I asked him, hey, What's your approach out there? And he said to me in Spanish, Yo voy ahí a tirar el strike. Más nada. I go there to throw strikes. That's it. He doesn't think about the situation. He doesn't think about who's the hitter. He just wants to throw strikes and let that sinking bowling ball that he throws do the action. Yvonne Marine, first pitch swinging, ground ball to third, fair ball. Backhanded there, and Machado throws him out. Well, that's a way to get through it. Garcia, one pitch, the base running mistake. Really hurt Nicaragua. They do get a run. We go to the ninth inning. Well, the Dominican Republic showing off some power today. They didn't hit a home run in their first game. Two of them today want Soto into the second deck. And then Manny Machado, his Padres teammate, who had hit two balls to the wall earlier in the game. Out to right center field for his first World Baseball Classic home run. Well, vintage Soto, vintage Machado. Both of those guys obviously understanding their swing, pro guys playing for the Dominican team, but during the season they played together. What a what a treat. Soto coming up to the plate now, then Julio Rodriguez and then Manny. Oh man, what a lineup. It's been a banner day for Juan Soto on base three times the only time he made it out he lined hard into a double play he's also thrown out a runner trying to score from left field leading the way in that leadoff spot for the Dominican six to one hey. okay Ebert, the new pitcher Elian Miranda stays in to play first base. He came up with the big hit. He's had maybe the two biggest hits for Nicaragua in this tournament so far. Sure has. Mm, good changeup right there. Look at Juan Soto. He says, "Okay, C C C C. Okay, I like that." Pitched in the professional league in Nicaragua. 
chance to pitch here against some of the greatest hitters in the world right here right now. What a challenge back to that change up again. Oh two. He got it. He strikes out Juan Soto with the changeup. Soto. He, he threw some good ones right there. What we call in Nicaragua El Cambio. The changeup. Look at Soto stare right at him like, oh man, okay. Didn't know you had that. Uh-huh. <laughs> He's only 21 years old on the mound. He was the rookie of the year in the league in Nicaragua. So Juan Soto probably finishes his day. We should talk here for a minute about the plan for Soto. Ronnie Linares was speaking about it before the game today. Here's Julio Rodriguez. Juan Soto is still not cleared to play in back to back games. Now, the Dominican had the day off yesterday, so he played game one. He plays here for them game two, but he will not play tomorrow. And he's why maybe, the best player today. Yeah, that's probably maybe why we saw Elo Jimenez today get some action. We'll get to Oscar Hernandez. As well, get some action. After after tomorrow, the schedule sets up where Soto should be able to play most of the rest of the way in right. this tournament if the Dominican keeps advancing. But tomorrow against a team that's got some big league talent, the Dominican will take on Israel, and they're they're going to have to play without him. I saw right there Soto talking about that change. He says, "Man, yo no sabía que había ese cambio. I didn't know there there was that change up." You know, I don't know him, but that change was was nasty. Here he is talking to Sandy Alcantara. Oh, oh. Electric. His changeup is a little firmer than this young oh, yeah. man's. <laughs> two and two now here to Julio Rodriguez. Who has a run batted in today hasn't yet had his signature moment yet in this World Baseball Classic. And it's amazing to think Rodriguez he's only one year older than the guy on the mound we're talking about the guy on the mound like he's a, a teenager who's Isn't that crazy getting his first experience in anything like this Rodriguez is already in the highest level well, back to back strikes off as a star. Strikes out Juan Soto and Julio Rodriguez. Who is this kid? <laughs> That's definitely something to cheer about for the fans from Nicaragua. And now, if he strikes out Machado, somebody's going to sign this guy. One for four, he's hit the ball hard just about every time. Strike one. They list him at 5'9, 170 pounds. Ninth thing, two down, nobody on. That's a strike, it's 0 2. <laughs> How about this? Hey, come on. I'm, it, it would be something. Oh, and two. Can he strike out the side? Machado. Foul ball back out of play. He might have a little adrenaline. That was that that was an 85 mile an hour changeup. <laughs> Look at the grin right there. Yeah. Everybody's enjoying this. O2. Machado to left field and deep. Britton back and he'll miss it. Can't make the catch. So Machado will ease his way into second. Got a hanging breaking ball right there. Man, he didn't miss it. 
See that breaking ball just stays upright. Look at him stay through it and stay connected. Look at that backside. Knee to knee. That's when you know you're throwing your, your legs at the baseball when it's connected like that. Just out of the reach right there. Yeah, not an easy play. Probably right. a ball that should have been caught. Yeah. They will give Machado a double. He, he has been on it today. Machado. Yeah, he's in uh, every at bat other than the fly out to center has been. The second fly out to center has been on the screws. So just another challenge for Duque Ebert. It's Rafael Devers. The, you take your deep breath. Okay, I got through Soto, Rodriguez, Machado got me. Hey, <laughs> face this guy. <laughs> Looks today for Rafael Devers. Get a double to get the scoring started back in the first inning. He's drawn a walk. One for three overall. Chance to drive in a run here. All team. Two and one. Our home plate umpire today, Chris Graham from Canada. He's done a nice job. He's had a good strike zone. Yeah, he has been. Very fair. Not a big league umpire, but he's uh, on the big stage. He's, he's done well. Yes. Ball. Three and one. I think for some of these umpires, it's just as big of a thrill. The, the, the guys who aren't big Absolutely. umpires to, to be a part of this. Down the right field line, hooking toward the corner, and it's a foul ball. Right, came over, but just into the seats. Well, Machado made Soto run about 15 wind sprints early in the game with foul <laughs> balls. So, man, he's doing all the running now. About time that he had to get a little running in. Two. Out again. He's saying, Vamos, let's go. He's getting some good pitches to hit, obviously. Feels like he can do a little bit more with it. You can just tell the pre pitch routine how locked in, how, how clean and smooth it is. Same thing every time. He's kind of stuck with, again, Hibbert is not a real hard thrower. He's kind of stuck with that. Cheat up in the box a little bit. And he struck him out though. What an inning wow. for the 21 year old. In a lot of ways, that's what the World Baseball Classic's all about. He strikes out Soto Rodriguez and Rafi Devers. Well, uh, we've had a lot of cool stuff today. This might be the best thing we've seen all day. Oh, yeah. A moment he'll never forget. A truly, truly, and the love and appreciation from everybody on that Nicaraguan side. A 21 year old, 5'9, 170 pounds, has never pitched in the affiliated professional leagues in the United States. He was the rookie of the year in the Nicaraguan Winter League. And he just pitched for the first time in the World Baseball Classic. And he struck out Juan Soto, Julio Rodriguez. And Rafael Devers and pitched the scoreless <laughs> inning. Wow! I, uh, incredible. I mean, it looks like he's 15 years old. He's taking pictures now in the dugout. This is what it's all about. That is just awesome. Can you imagine how proud his parents are, abuela, abuelo, his grandparents, his grandfather. Look at him. He's he's going inside probably to soak it all in and. All the high fives and just a moment he'll definitely never forget. 
I mean, he probably should have retired the side in order. Machado had a ball that could have been caught. That is strike three, one out here in the bottom of the ninth inning. But it gave him the chance to strike out Rafi Devers. Unbelievable. So maybe it wasn't a bad thing. We talked about it with Soto saying, man, where did that changeup come from? And he started throwing them, especially to Devers. Uh, that is just so cool. And look, this this tournament is about winning a championship and the pride of the countries that baseball is so important in. But it's also about growing the game around the world and giving players a chance to right. play against the game's best. And in some ways, you couldn't find a more perfect moment to epitomize what this World Baseball Classic is supposed to be about than what that young man just did. And as a young man, when you step foot in, in a big league stadium as well, that's a big deal. Being able to play, I remember the first time I was in a big league stadium, I was able to play with big league players. It was a day I'll never forget. Just an exhibition is good enough for me, and I can only imagine what it would be like to play at a World Baseball Classic against some of the best. Dominican Republic two outs away from a win. Luis Garcia <laughs> painting corners. Strike two with a 96 mile an hour fastball. And he just rips it. Rips it and rips it. Throw strikes, mas nada. Tirale strike, mas nada. That's all he, I was like, man, it's that easy. Says, yeah, I don't even care who's hitting. Yeah, when you throw 96, I just grab the ball easier. and try to throw strikes. Other than that, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Very simple plan. Said, no analytics, no, no going over scout reports. Now nah, I leave that to the catcher. I trust my guys. But all right, that's fair. Two and two here. Rodolfo Bonet yes! went around on the slider, strike three. So now Nicaragua is down to its final out. Uh, not yeah, he went. Not total domination today from. The Dominican Republic, but important for them after the way game one went. Yesterday was an off day to come out here and just get in the win column. Maybe build something for tomorrow and the rest of this tournament where they are one of the championship favorites. Orlando Valle, he's had a uh, an eventful day. Yes, he has. Strike one. Hey. We'll say it was uh, a good win. Obviously, they know they could have done more, but more than not, just a good win. Get through it. Do what you had to do. 12 hits, six runs. By a foul ball, and now one strike away. Could have easily been more as well, but they played Nicaragua. Give them credit. They played a lot of. Made some tough catches. They played good defense. JT Ramirez was pretty good for them. This, this could have been a 10, 11, 12 run day for Juan Soto and his teammates. One strike away from celebrating a win. They've been celebrating all afternoon <laughs> already. Garcia ready to go. The 0 2. Fouled away. Valle is a. Yeah, he's. He is a tough guy. He will battle against really good stuff. He pointed out how he chokes up, sort of shortens his swing. He's already got a short swing. He's had a nice few games. There he has. Ball player takes that one, one and two. Made multiple positions. Tomorrow night, the Dominican Republic against Israel. Tonight, Israel and Puerto Rico here in Miami. Which 
Jack Peterson is going to hit leadoff tonight for Israel. Saw a peak of their lineup. I love watching him play. I love watching him hit. The one two. Ball. Bay is just not going to go quietly. 99 miles an hour right there. The 2 2 in the dirt. Garcia just can't get through Valle and finish this game off. And I'll tell you what, Valle, got to give him credit though. He, he's you know, a pest, just not giving away any at bats, not giving away any pitches. You talk about the character of this team. That's, that's right there, the character and the way they've played this tournament. I've been very impressed. They're going to go 0 and 3 here and have a tough time getting a win even tomorrow, but I've been impressed. Yeah. Showing a lot of fight, a lot of character. They're going to make you earn everything. 3 2. A big chopper slowly hit toward the middle. Franco charges and got him at first. Ball game over. First win in this World Baseball Classic for one of the heavy favorites. Juan Soto led the way with a great all around game. Six to one, the final score. And maybe some momentum built for the rest of this tournament. Well, I would say this if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I like Juan Soto at the leadoff. Two hits, three runs, a big bomb. Manny Machado, two for five, with obviously another homer, but overall, just a really good game. And I think. Got to give a lot of credit to Elo Jimenez and what he was able to do to break the ice with runners in scoring position. He got the, the party started early on. And you got to credit Javier Castillo, Montero, and Garcia. Those guys put on an absolute show for all around a, a Dominican team that played a really clean game, six runs on 12 hits. They did what they needed to do today to continue into this tournament. So a much needed win for the Dominican a hard fight for Nicaragua six to one the final score we're right back here tonight at seven Eastern Israel and Puerto Rico for Yonder Alonso and our old crew Dave Fleming saying so long we'll see you later from Miami the great scenes of this World Baseball Classic thanks for watching this presentation of the World Baseball Classic.